Today I want to talk about online chess addiction, or OCA. That doesn't exist yet, but it should. While I was browsing an article from mostdangerousgamedesign.com named The Psychology of Rewards and Games by Max Seidman, I remembered my thoughts about being addicted to playing online chess, which I surely was at one point in my life. So by searching the internet, I found nothing more than some forum entries about this theme. Since it is also perfectly well fitting into my card game Zero Bang, I would like to tell you my thoughts about it. Chess is considered a good thing. It sharpens your mind, it strengthens your memory, it even makes you get creative, and there are so many more good things worth mentioning. But what happens if it gets out of hand? What happens if you get an addiction to online chess? In 1992, the first idea of playing real-time chess games online was born, and not long after, it was possible due to the ICC, the Internet Chess Club. And boy, what a revolution it was! Over the years, the community for playing chess was growing rapidly. Not only due to the amazing benefit to play with chess players all around the world on the same level you are playing yourself, but also cause the dopamine got stimulated in the most beautiful disguise. Chess is good. I enjoy chess. I play it a lot. So it is good. So don't get me wrong, please. In my opinion, chess is still the very best board game ever made. No doubt. Nonetheless, here are some reasons why it is so easy to fall into the swirl of getting addicted. Number 1. Access So let's see how long it takes to open a new chess game online. That was it. I opened the website and clicked on the button in my already logged in account. Internet was on anyway. If I would have been a waiting time for like 10 to 15 minutes or would need to always verify myself and enter the password manually, this would change things a lot. But as it is now, there is hardly any effort. The less effort for a hit, the more tempting to get one. Number 2. False idea As mentioned earlier, chess is considered a very positive thing, which it is of course, but since the online playing has become as easy as it is, since many years meanwhile, the addiction moves in very subtle. Back then, when I told a friend I was playing chess for the last six hours, his answer was, wow, that is so cool, you must be so good and well trained with your brain now. Fact is, your chess performance overall is mostly due to practicing it, which many studies show. When people tell me they are not smart enough to learn chess, they probably are just not smart enough to understand that you do not have to be smart to learn and play chess. Number 3. Speed Playing 5-minute blitz chess games is almost a relict. Nowadays we play 3 minutes, mostly 1 minute bullet or hyper and ultra bullet with 30 seconds and 15 seconds for a whole match. The quicker the game and the more often you win, the more often you get your hit. It also rushes your adrenaline, which is another chemical reaction for preparing a dose of dopamine. Number 4. Competition Every once in a while you find a worthy opponent and rematch her. Turns out she's equally good as you. You are in the lead with 8 to 6 points and want to continue until you have 10 points. Now she catches up and leads with 9 to 11. You win your match, but now, since she's leading, you cannot let her go like this. You have to beat her with at least three games in front now. And so on. This continues until either one of you reaches this virtual goal or just gets tired. Final score, 24 to 21. Competition is surely fun, but traps you easily for getting time and one and a half hours later, you wake up from this and feel like you have lost anyway. Number 5. Emotions Chess matches can get very personal, mostly through emotional anger. You play somebody and he's super fast, faster than you, so always when you are just a tiny bit away from winning, he wins on time. So you lost 3 games you should have won. It became personal. You won't stop until you win. Exhausted after a longer playing time and losing your games more than winning, you feel bad, weak and not worthy. 
best recipe against that? Play again later and win more games than you lose? Number 6. Triggers The internet, your computer or your mobile phone trigger. I have access now and I could play. YouTube videos of chess games and chess news on the internet. All those factors make you think about a quick game to play. When you played a lot of chess games online, you have conditioned your brain like Pavlov his dogs. Every time a bell rings, the dogs are dripping saliva, cause it triggers feeding time. Every time you are browsing through the internet, you might think about a quick game of chess. And talking about this, when was the last time you have had a snack or a meal sitting at the table just eating and doing nothing else? Oh yeah, internet triggers saliva dripping for us, as if a bell would ring. Number 7. Age. The younger you are, the easier you get into the addiction of trying to get a hit. Studies have proven that a young brain gets addicted easier, cause it is still in a strong learning process in life. And it is also much harder and takes a way longer time to reset your brain and get back to normal. The same phenomenon applies to internet porn addiction, by the way. Young people are getting used to this sensation at an early age before even having a real experience or encounter. This leads to a complete false brain programming and this terror takes its way. Number 8. Practice If you don't play chess for a while, you will get weaker. This leads to, if I would stop for a while, everybody else gets better than me. And that doesn't feel good, so, again, a false idea of training leads to a positive idea of doing something good for yourself. Instead of reading chess books, learning chess studies and training with a real person, you choose the easy shortcut, the hack, the fun part. So what to do now, realizing that there might be an addiction of online chess? Is there a cure? Oh yes, there is, and it is not that easy. First, you gotta watch this video from the website www.yourbrainonporn.com. Link is in the description. This is actually a video about internet porn addiction, but it applies to every addiction out there and is explained in a very good way. And since chess is online too, it is very similar how your brain is working. I would call it your brain on online chess. Basically, you have to reset your brain like a computer. I actually believe this is a real and very, very serious issue. So the younger you are, the earlier you should take a long chess break. Like a total break from chess. A brain resets in 3 to 6 months. After that, you have a chance to start all over again with real people. What helps a lot is to become a better person in life, striving away from pleasure, which hits dopamine, and acceding to so-called happiness, which enlightens serotonin. I'm referring to Dr. Lustig's book, The Hacking of the American Mind, where he's explaining that dopamine is addictive, serotonin not. Pleasure wants more and more, happiness is in a state of zen, or being one with yourself. So if you do something which would be good, for example, washing the dishes by hand, you don't want more and more of this, it doesn't touch the dopamine, but it touches the serotonin which makes you feel you have achieved something. It wasn't that much fun, but it fulfilled the matter. The washing dishes method is from Stephen Pressfield's book Turning Pro, by the way. 